the, the exhibition itself was, was fairly interesting. Um, I'm just going to draw your attention again to, even in 1879, when we're depicting um, you know, the wonder of, of Australia and Sydney, we've still um, got Aboriginal people in the, um, in the foreground cooking dinner, holding a spear. Uh, and in this case, we have a kangaroo too, which is, um, which is obviously getting ready for, to be cooked. But um, I hadn't noticed that until I started looking at these things more closely, the details that you, you miss. Um, we've also got the, the Southern Cross above us and, um, and what is now the, um, um, the motto of, of New South Wales, uh, which is bright, uh, sort of roughly translate as newly risen, how brightly you shine. Um, anyway, the, the Sydney International Exhibition was the first event of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere and it was intended to bring the world to Sydney at a time when the colony was prospering on a wave of gold and wool. 34 countries attended the exhibition and over 1.1 million people visited it. Sydney will not see another event of this scale and impact for another 121 years when the Sydney Olympic Games, came, oh, when the Sydney Olympic Games were held. Now, um, Charles Bayliss uh, produced the photographs in the album we have on display and uh, he exhibited at the exhibition and was awarded a commendation for his photographs. Now, Bayliss remains mostly well known for his early panoramic views of Sydney and New South Wales and he documented, really documented the emergence of modern Australia in the second half of the 19th century. He began his photographic career as assistant to the itinerant Beaufoy Martin and the American and Australian Photographic Company. And they were um, contracted by Bernard Holtman, who we have pictured here, um, to undertake a series of photographs of New South Wales and Victoria for the purposes of marketing the colonies to immigrants. Now, um, Holtman was, uh, became a, a very wealthy man on the back of that nugget that, that we see here now. He, um, he was one of, one, one of a, you know, quite a few uh, people who came, looked for gold, and he actually found it. Um, one of the really interesting things about this, this image, which I have taken from the State Library of New South Wales Holterman collection, is that it's, um, it, it's a fake. Um, the, the photograph of the, of the ore that he found is, uh, is a separate photograph to the photograph of Holterman. The photograph of Holterman was taken many, many years after the, the nugget was actually discovered. And, um, and the nugget was, was crushed you know, almost immediately after it had been dug out of the ground because it was worth thousands of, of, of pounds. So... Um, I think Holterman, you know, wanted to, um, or you know, was a bit nostalgic about his gold mining days, and um, and had um, had Bayliss concoct this this image. So you know, early Photoshop, um, but just as um, just as persuasive as as a as, as one of these documents of histories that you know may or may not be a little bit um, unreliable. And we see that a lot in, in collections of material um, and even in the exhibitions that, um, that are put together of them. You know, we, we have to make assumptions about different things and not, not everything is as real as, as we think it is.